Pip, what's up, man? It's great to see you from uh, the other side of the pond. I know. Kind of cool. Weird. It is. It's well, it's it's not any different really than how we normally connect, right? <laughs> but you just happen to be in France instead of in, in northern Utah. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, if we could do it between Utah and Maine, I don't know. France seems uh, you know, just a little bit further away. Not just a, a little deal. hop. Just a little hop. Well, I'm glad you can make it work. I wasn't sure. I'm like, oh man, I think I'm riding solo today. And and I don't know. It's you've said it in the past. If it, when there's when there's two of us, the dynamic is just better. Like we feed off of each other, different perspectives. I like having you as a co-host here, and it's just way better when there's when there's two of us instead of just just me or just you. I'm sure feel the same way. Yeah, totally. I I appreciate that. And and it's funny too. While I'm here, Asia did ask at one point. She's like, "Well, can't can't Ryan record alone?" And I'm like, "Babe, I don't want to." Like, I don't want to not do this call. Yeah. Does it make sense? This isn't about, I don't know. I and mean, then we say it time and time again, right? The, the power of the conversation. And that's all that we're doing. How many times have you gotten a message from someone on Instagram that's like, oh man, thank you so much. And what did we do? We just participated in a conversation and they did as well by listening. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's huge power in, in it for all of us just by having the dialogue and the conversation around important things. Well, now Asia's on my list of conversations that <laughs> uncomfortable conversations that her and I are going to need to have. So yeah, Asia, I'm no. disappointed. I'm really disappointed in you. <laughs> well, and, and it's kind of funny. I'm not, I think I mentioned this to you, but she, and, and the joke is that she's unstable. She likes to be unstable. So when I create stability with my very cautious way of doing things, she gets antsy and she's like, We've been in Utah now for, you know, I think we moved back to Utah from New York, geez, like 12 years ago. And uh -huh. she's like, it's time to move. She wants to move. She, she's ready I'm to like, go. why? Just, just cause, you know, right? And so <laughs> this trip is actually our compromise. This okay. is every summer, we're going to go live somewhere else for a, for a month or two. And hopefully that gets it out of her system. We and and let's be honest, and and it's not as clean and cut dry as that. Is you know, we want to culture our children, right? We sure. think it's good for them to experience other cultures, and so this is one of the ways that we plan to do that. And and I'm working while here, so you know, what the, I mean? you really have to worry when she starts saying things like, "I'm thinking about wanting another baby." Like I don't know, kind of antsy. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> like traveling is fine. Yeah, it's when she's like, "I think yeah. I want another yeah. baby." You have to start. Is it life about. hard enough? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> All right, man. Well, let's get oh, into wow. some questions. I When I posed for these questions in our exclusive Brotherhood, the Iron Council, um, I asked for questions regarding sovereignty. I figured that'd be really good. Uh, as of the release of this podcast, yesterday was the 4th of July. So obviously a lot of freedom, a lot of independence, um, sovereignty, if you will. And so, yeah. Yes, exactly. So I figured we'd uh, stick with the theme for another day or two. Hopefully we can stick with the theme forever because individual sovereignty and personal liberty is crucial, but I figured we'd uh, hit heavy on it this week. Yeah. And and there's some good questions like you alluded to. So, um, you know, and Ryan mentioned something, the Iron Council, to learn more about the Iron Council, go to orderofman.com slash Iron Council. Closed currently, yeah, but we'll open it back up next quarter. So stay We've got connected. a really good cohort of guys, new guys who came in as well. Um, they're super engaged. They've got through the start here set a large percentage of them already through the start here segment. Guys have messaged me. They're getting value already. So it's actually really cool to see. Yeah. And in fact, I think we do have a couple of forge guys. Uh good. you know, asking questions today. Forge well, are new so. guys for those of you who don't know. So those forge guys are new guys. Yeah, All right, sorry. let's get into it. All right. Eeg Yeagas. My wife expresses that she feels like I am waiting for her vibe to change instead of being present and causing her vibe to change. What might be some actions or ideas to leave my wife and family by being present and in terms of vibe, mood, positivity? Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I, I think as a leader, people are going to respond off of your energy. I mean, that's what you're talking about vibe, right? Is energy. Yeah. I think people are going to respond based on your energy. So if you're anxious and, or depressed or, you know, high strung or, or any number of, of emotions or whatever you could be feeling, then people are going to pick up on that and it's going to affect and impact their behavior. So as a leader, I'm not saying we don't have those, those feelings or we don't even express them. We should when they're appropriate. But if you're looking for your environment to change or for people around you to change, I think it was 
maybe Gandhi, who's attributed with the quote of be the change that you want to see in the world, right? So yeah. it all starts right. with you. So what I would start with is I would do an inventory. And, and by the way, this, as it relates to sovereignty, this is really important because what a lot of people will do is they'll try to change other people. I'm guilty of this. Like, oh, this person's not behaving the way they want them to. They're not responding the way that I think they should. They're not giving me enough attention. They're, they're not doing X, Y, and Z, or they're doing this and I don't like it. And so it's all about trying to change that other person. And a lot of the times we do that, at least I do, through subtle manipulation tactics, whether it's guilting them into do something or gaslighting them into a certain behavior. It's obviously not healthy. So the best thing that we can do and in order to regain and, and maintain control of our sovereignty is to focus on the only thing that we can, which is ourselves. So if you're not, if you're noticing there's a vibe, like you said, at your home that you're not excited about, or maybe she's not thrilled with, then what is your energy? Is, are you the one creating that? And what specifically can you do to change your own behavior, which will naturally permeate throughout the walls of your home? So very simply, and I hate, I almost hate to say it this way because it sounds oversimplified, but I think it's true is, are you working out? Are you training your body every day or are you 50, 60 pounds overweight? That's a big deal because if you're not in shape, you're going to be tired. You're going to be lethargic. You're, you're not going to have energy. You're not going to have stamina. You're not going to be able to engage and be present, which is a word you used for your family. If you're out of shape. Yeah. So are you going into the gym? And by the way, not just the physical aspect of that, but the physiological stuff that's going on in your brain about feeling better. Like, don't you feel better when you go to the gym? Why do you feel better? It's just chemicals. It's just the dopamine and the, and the, the endorphins and everything else that are now released and coursing through your veins that actually have been proven to make you feel better. And don't you think if you feel better, you're going to engage with your family in a different way? So there's that. Another element of it is you should have a notepad somewhere or a journal so that you can start documenting these feelings. Uh, if you're holding on to them, if you're not expressing them, uh, they're caged, they're bottled up, and they're seeping out in little ineffective and maybe even inappropriate ways that are impacting the way your children see you show up and the way that, in this case, your wife sees you show up. And also, you need, in addition to that, a band of brothers, a, a group of men who you can communicate with on a different level or in a different way than you might be able to with your wife. And that's not to say you need to keep secrets from her or not share things with her or not even be open and humble about the, the shortcomings that you feel. I think we, we should work on that, but we can talk with men in a different way and they're going to give us something that we can't get from our significant others. So I would, I, I think that's the trifecta. It's taking care of your physical health. It's taking care of your, your mental and emotional health mental by having health. journaling and then having a good solid band of brothers in your corner that you can share and offload some of these feelings and situations that you're dealing with because they can give you something different. That's what I would suggest. The only thing that I'd add is, and, and it's just, I'm projecting on a failure of mine is I feel better when I work out. I feel better when I go to work and I get things done, but I have a tendency to do it kind of too intense <laughs> and I'm too serious about it all. And I'm getting mm. things done and I'm not a joy to be around. It's totally possible to do those things and not be enjoyable. And so have fun. And, and that's where our influence comes from. That's even something that's present for me, even at work lately, I've been thinking, it's like, man, we got it. You know, I keep talking about culture and about the importance of loving what we do and, and being excited about our jobs, but I'm walking around like, like I'm taking someone's head off. Right. Mm, <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah. geez, man, he's so intense. It's like, you know, if I lighten up a little bit, I'd be way more enjoyable to be around, you know, and, and that would uplift other people in another way. I mean, we, we cracked a joke. I mean, we said something about Matt Jenkins a few weeks ago, but it, it's the, it's the Matt Jenkins factor. Yeah. I don't know if you have to go that extreme because Matt's pretty, <laughs> pretty exciting to be around, maybe almost too much, but um, I don't know. It, it's just something to be added to. It's just, you know, life is short, have fun. And, and people want to follow you. Um, and your kids will have more of a desire to follow you if what you're doing is 
joyous and fun and not just intense and grind. Yeah, that's a good point. That's something I could definitely work on as well. Like even <laughs> listen to my answer is like, do these three steps and you <sighs> change the vibe yeah. in your home. <laughs> Yeah. So I think yeah. that's, and uh, I'm guilty. I think of that's it. well said. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. funny as a side note, funny thing. I was walking down the, um, I was walking down the hallway. I, I just walk intense, intentional, highly intentional when I walk somewhere and my assistants in, uh, I came walking to my desk and she, she's laughing. I'm like, what? She's all, I just want to let you know. It's really funny. She's like, someone mentioned to me the other day. They're like, man, when Kip's walking, I almost like he's walking to a fight. He looks dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> That's like funny. he's angry. And I was like, okay, mental note, smile a little bit, maybe say some highs, you know, <laughs> lighten up. You got, you got but, stuff to do, yeah. man. Forget about all the pleasantries. <laughs> Just go get it done. That's funny. Totally. You and all I right, are Spencer Hancock. from that standpoint. I know. Yeah. You know what? Skip our answers. Just find you know Google do that. The opposite. Instead. I'm just joking. Do the opposite. We have to do. <laughs> Spencer Hancock, how do you reconcile um, having your? Uh, how do you reconcile having your individual sovereignty as a man without alienating your spouse or coming off as selfish? I I think the first thing you need to realize it, there's a mindset around that, and and the mindset is you're not doing it. This is hard. I, I just want to process this for a minute. The mindset is I'm not doing this for selfish gain. I'm doing this so I can be in better service to other people, the people that I care for about. For a bigger purpose than yourself. Right. Yeah. And I think if that's the mindset you approach self-care, we'll just call it self-care, then it's it's not going to come across like that because you're doing it for that reason. And so that means you're considerate of the way that your decisions might be impacting other people. So for example... Mm -hmm. If you're training for, and I know you've done this, Kip, you're training for a big event. Maybe it's a Ragnar like we ran a month or two ago or a Spartan race or a triathlon. If you're doing it for selfish reasons only, you're probably not going to be able to take into consideration the way other people see it. You're like, what's the problem? Why don't they understand? Why? Like, don't they see this as important to me? And that combative attitude is what is portrayed. And then of course, it feels like you're at odds with the people that you care about. But if you're doing it and you're thinking to yourself, because it's a deeply entrenched mindset of I'm doing this, taking care of myself so I can show up more fully as a husband or as a father, a leader in my community, an owner of this business. And that's the mindset. Then you're actually going to start taking people into consideration. So if it's your wife, for example, then you might say, Hey, hon, I'm, I'm going to be doing this triathlon in three months. And my training schedule is dot, dot, dot but I want to make sure that it works for us. And I want to make sure it works with the kids. This is important to me and I'm going to do it, but yeah. what would be the best way to approach this training schedule? So you and I still get time and I'm still, uh, engaged with the kids and, and let her have an input in that. She's going to be impacted by it. Your kids are going to be impacted by it. Same thing at work. You know, if, if you're only taking time for yourself, people are going to see it as you being disengaged and not caring about the business. Your employees might even feel that. But if you explain to them honestly and openly about why you might be absent, then they're not left to fill in the blanks about what's going on. And that's what they'll do. They'll make assumptions. Your employees will, your family will, your clients will. If you're absent or disengaged for any reason, they're going to jump to assumptions and conclusions about why that is. And typically, they're not going to be favorable. But if, on the other hand, you include them in that decision-making process or at least let them know what's going on, then there's no assumptions to be made and everybody's like, oh, okay, I got that. That makes sense to me. But then the other thing I would say is you need to continually look for feedback. And, and I've talked a lot about this concept of work-life balance. That's one we hear a lot. You guys are like, what's the work-life balance? And I think what it's most people are looking for, that's what they're looking for. They're like, what's the ratio? Is it 60-40? Is it 72-28? I had to do the math real quick because I was a little slower on that. Yeah. Than I <laughs> <laughs> I should have used 70 and 30, not 72 and 28. <laughs> yeah. What do you do with doing you know, like the next example, 23.8 versus. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said 38, but I got it right. I think I got it right. You guys check me if I'm wrong. Uh, but what they're looking for is they're looking for the perfect ratio and it doesn't exist. You actually might hit the perfect ratio, but it's going to change in the next 60 seconds because there's going to be something new going on in your life. 
you know, one of your kids breaks his leg or, uh, you know, has a girlfriend issue you need to focus on or needs a little more attention or something at work, a fire comes out and you lose a big client. So you need to develop and uh, focus more time on that. You know, maybe even in the evening, it's like, oh man, we just lost a big client. Guys, I know it's six o'clock, but I got to do this. So these things are dynamic. And so even if I gave you a perfect formula today or a ratio, it would change in 60 seconds. And so the point I'm making is that you're always going to be looking for feedback because you're going to find that people in your life are going to need different things from you at different times. And we have seasons. So if it's training for a triathlon, that's a season. And so you're going to devote more time to that than you would to family. But then there's other times where maybe the family is having a hard time or Maybe they're going back to school. And so that's a stressful situation. And so you need to devote a little more time to that. The point I'm making, it's dynamic. And we need to constantly be looking and evaluating the feedback we're receiving from the people who are impacted by our decisions so we can adjust our percentages accordingly. You should never get to zero on self-care. Sometimes it might be 10. Sometimes it might be 90. Yeah. But that's also determined by what you need and what other people in your life need from you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I like what you said here, as well as the previous question is like the paradigm shift of sovereignty is not about um, like a selfish desire, but sovereignty around your individual self and those you serve. Would you say that's always true? I mean, I'm trying to think of an exception to that as you say that. Yeah. I don't think that we make these types of decisions in a vacuum. So I, even if that were true, I don't think that you can improve yourself and not have it rub off positively on people around you. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're always, well, and let's be frank. I mean, a, a life of fulfillment is going to be found in, in a higher sense of purpose and meaning, which is usually found in the service of others, whether it's family, your spouse, your parents, or your siblings of some sort. So if that, if that, if your sovereignty is to serve, then, then I, I think that's kind of the ideal level of sovereignty um, versus just individual focus, but, but nonetheless, right. There's impact regardless, right. That's yeah, just going sure. to happen. Yeah. Well, this is why I don't yeah. like some of these more extreme men's movements like Meg Tao, men going their own way and you hear from incels and these types. Um, even the Andrew Tate audience tends to go more towards this route of I'm doing this for me. I need to take care of mine. And it's yeah. at the expense of other people, not in service to other people. So you can certainly go that route. I mean, people do. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's fulfilling. Um, I think you're going to alienate a lot of people around you. I've done that in my life. When I tend to get self-centered, when I'm doing things at other people's expense, I can sugarcoat it and tell myself and them that I'm doing it for me to serve them better. But if the reality is I'm doing it at their expense, that's too extreme. And you're going to end up alienating the people that you love. So I choose to look at my own self-care and my own sovereignty as inextricably connected with my ability to serve people I care about and have a desire to serve and lead. Yeah. I like that. Matt Hadfield, since writing the book Sovereignty, how has your view or understanding of personal sovereignty changed or developed? And what is your main takeaway in relationship to sovereignty over the past five years since you wrote your first book? Well, the biggest way that it's changed, I think, is that I've learned, and I always knew this, we know this intuitively, but sometimes we don't really, we have to experience it. And what I'm experiencing, especially over the past 12 months, is that not everything is within our control. Hmm. And, and, I, and I, you know that, we, everybody knows yeah. that, yeah. but until you actually experience it and you're left with the hardship of dealing with things outside of your control you don't really understand it. And I've had to wrestle with a lot of that. I mean, some, some of my external circumstances are a direct result of the way that I showed up, which was not as well as I could have. And some of it, even though I'm working towards improving myself and fixing myself and getting better and, and doing more self-care, but doing it in, in relationship to how I serve other people, there's still decisions that other people can make. And there's still yeah. factors that you just can't influence. And it's really hard to deal with when that's the case. But what I'm also finding is that if you do it right 
and you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know, if I was dropped into this situation, this unfortunate situation again, and I would play it the exact same way I did today, then that's all a man can do. Yeah. You know, like things happen. Some of it's your responsibility and fault. Some of it's not. But if you could look at yourself honestly and say, I would do it the exact same way, then you have a clear conscience. And it doesn't always make it easier because you're still wrestling with the fallout of your decisions, but at least you know you're trying to do it right moving forward. Yeah. At least you have integrity around how you're dealing with it. Yeah. 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 Ryan, how do you how do you struggle with or find that balance of what like because no, well, I'm not obviously uh, doing a good job asking this question. Based upon what you just said, I think sometimes guys may latch onto that, right? Oh, it's outside my realm of control. Nothing I can do, right? But in the same breath, we have this podcast. We talk all the time about like, no, your impact does matter, right? And how you show up does affect your kids. And you know what I mean? And there's this line and, and it's a slippery slope sometimes, I think, right? When when guys could hold on to this, uh, it's outside my realm of control. Nothing I can do. I'll just be me. You know what I mean? Versus being powerful and realizing that much more is in your realm of control than not, but in the same breath, going back to what you just said, like, how do you deal with not trying to control everything and realizing like, huh, you know what, this is out of my control. How do you balance that? Right. How do you, how do you identify that for yourself and know that you are acting in integrity and not just using that as a, as an excuse? Yeah. So that, okay. So I've wrestled that last part of that question and it's very insightful I'll, and I'll answer the full thing, but I like what you said right yeah. there. Um, here, here's what I would suggest is a great litmus test. And when I use this, I can evaluate why I'm doing the things I do because it's easy to say I'm doing things out of the goodness of my heart, but really you're probably most of the time, myself included are doing things for selfish gain. Yeah. Right. Totally. Or to manipulate of some sort, which is self yes. selfish gain. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So the, I, I think a question you could ponder on is if nobody saw me engaged in this behavior or there was no reward I would receive from acting the way I am, hmm. would I still do it this way? If you would, then that you, you're, you're aligned sure, with your Tim. moral belief because you know, Hey, I'm just going to do this because it's the th it's the right thing to do, regardless of whether or not I get praise and accolades from other people regardless of whether or not it benefits me in some relationship somehow, that's a person of integrity. And I, and I'm, look, I'm not painting myself as that person of integrity. I'm, I'm saying that that's what I want to live towards. I want to live. And, yeah. and you know why this is so valuable is because that's ultimate sovereignty because you are <laughs> unaffected by the way people respond to that behavior, because you're doing it not for the expectation of anything in return, but simply because it's the right thing to do. Now, if yeah. I do something and I know it's the right thing to do, my behavior is not going to be influenced negatively. If you happen to respond Kip, negatively to what I do, my behavior is going to be the same. It's not going to be uh, changed positively or, or changed in some way because you're, you're positive about it. And then I begin to exploit the relationship because I'm not doing it for you. I'm cool. doing it because it's the right thing to do. That's pretty difficult, especially when it comes to relationships that we have with people we care about, you know, our kids, for example, you know, there might be things about the way that you want to show up as an example, and you know, it's, you want to show up as an example to them. So you can use it as fuel to make better choices. But is that the only reason you should be doing it because your kids are seeing that? I don't think so. I think if you can go even deeper than that, you go to the gym because it's the right thing to do. Oh, and also as a side benefit, my kids will see me in shape and I'll be able to be with them longer and all these other things that's even more potent and powerful. Yeah. So ultimate sovereignty yep. is doing things that are intrinsically the right thing to do and separating yourself from the result, which yeah. is obviously easier said than done. Well, and this is interesting because there's, there's a natural slippery slope. There's like righteous manipulation, right? Where, where, because it's aligned with quote unquote, the right thing, then we just latch onto it and go, I'm, I'm doing the right thing but the right thing for the wrong reason is still not the right thing. Well, and, I'll, and I'll even challenge your, and, and I know what you're saying. So like, I'm not yeah. just 
debating semantics here, but I'll challenge hey, I just concept. made that up, man. You can't argue with what I just made up. <laughs> no, let's just blow this out of the water before it gets out. Oh, okay. There's no such thing as righteous manipulation. Yeah. It's manipulation by its definition is exploiting behaviors or people or resources for yeah. your own gain. I mean, I understand it makes it easy what you're because it's totally it's shrouded in righteousness. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I just want to bring that out there because I think there is something as righteous influence yeah. or righteous leadership or even righteous persuasion. But I, but I think this, uh, uh, the concept of righteous manipulation, I understand what you're saying. I think it's good. We bring yeah, yeah. it up, but I also think it's really important that we understand like, just because how does the saying go? The ends justify the means. No, they don't. Yeah. No, they don't. Yeah. We say that all the time, but they don't. They don't justify the means. And we know it's right. And we know how to show up. And if you do that enough, you're inevitably going to win. And you may not win in, in the acute moment. Like doing the right thing, there actually might be negative consequences in the moment for doing the right thing. But over the long haul, it's going to serve you and other people well. Yeah. So and I'm isn't it quite idea, ironic? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I was working through it anyway. Yeah. Um, well, that's why these conversations but, I mean, are powerful. Well, and isn't and, and ironic everything that we just said, isn't that what we all justify anyway, right? We, we always justify our actions as quote unquote being righteous so that way we can live with them. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. we, we typically always try to shroud everything in righteousness, you know, yeah. that way it's justified. All right. Adam Lewis. Can um, I say one other thing some, about the concept yeah, 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 of manipulation? I'm really good at this actually. Like I, and, and I have you been have accused skill, of this skill set. Yeah. yeah you got to, I've been set. accused of this and it's an accurate <laughs> reflection is I'm really good with my words. I can read people pretty well and I'm, I'm really good at that. So I have to be very cautious of not doing it even subconsciously. But the reason manipulation is a problem is because you're not letting other people have their sovereignty. And that's the problem. You can't say that you value individual liberty if you're not willing to give other people their liberty. Because you don't. You don't actually value it. You value it for yourself, but not for other people. So it's not really about the liberty. It's about your own selfish desires. So the reason manipulation is a problem is because a couple of things. You're either not giving people all of the information, so they're not making an informed decision, or you're giving them false and faulty information and they're making decisions based on deceit. And that means you're not treating them fairly. Yeah. So now on the other hand, if you give people all of the information and you present it in a way that you think is benefit, there's nothing wrong with that, but you give people all of the information and then allow them to make informed decisions. Now you're somebody who actually ascribes to the concept of individual liberty, personal sovereignty, because you're trusting that people can make decisions for themselves. And if they can't, then you're still going to help them, right? Because we all mess up. Like we all make great decisions and we all make really horrible decisions. And when our people make bad decisions, we don't abandon them. We stand by them and we love them and we serve them and we help them work through those bad decisions and the consequences of those bad decisions. Yeah. And, and the energy of manipulation to keep that train going is Oof. exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> it is so much better to let them execute, let them be their quote unquote own engine and find alignment and support them than just constantly manipulating them to do what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Really good point. Adam Lewis, what are some strategies to help lead our wives through a hard miscarriage while having sovereignty to address us? Well, having this, I don't understand that last part, leading our wife through a yeah. miscarriage while having the sovereignty Oh, to address us, meaning taking care of our own, like our own issues with, yes. with the miscarriage. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not always great at this because I don't have, like, I talked about one thing I'm good at, one thing I'm not good at. And there's only one thing I'm not good at. That's, that's a joke, by the way. You didn't laugh Let it be documented. <laughs> <laughs> I took a while. 
<laughs> it was the delay. It was the delay in uh connection. No, no, no. I was like, that. yeah, that seems right. That seems about right. I, you know, <laughs> I must be being serious. <laughs> um, I'm not a real empathetic person. <laughs> so it's hard for me. And man, that's that's a I've never experienced that. So how how could I know what that's like? I don't, fortunately. Um I, I would say let me address the second half of that question by taking care of yourself. It goes back to what I said earlier to the, I think it was the first question, making sure that you're taking care of yourself physically by working out, training, moving your body, still do that. Maybe even more yeah. so now, uh, yeah. <laughs> journal these things. Cause there's things that you don't in the moment need to be dumping on your wife all the time. So journal and document, and then have your band of brothers. So you can process and work through these things. And by the way, don't not talk about this with your friends. Like talk about it. Cause you know what? One or more of them have probably gone through a similar experience or, or are currently going through an experience and they can work you through what you're currently feeling and how, how you're feeling about it. So that, that's what I would say to the second half of the question, man, with the first, I, again, I don't know. I, I feel like anything I would say would be said in ignorance because uh, have you dealt with this Kip personally? I have, um, but, but I think, I think the principle is transcendent, right? So sure. I yeah. think about like your, your dad dying, right. Or a loved one dying. Um, what's the strategy for you dealing with grief while in the same token being there for those that need you and that are within your realm of care. And, and me personally, I think the answer is, is don't be ready, not like be ready, like be in a position. So when your dad does die or a loved one dies, or your wife has a miscarriage that you're complete in a way that you can deal with hardship. And then that way you can deal with it appropriately and then be in a position to support others. Isn't it quite ironic, right? Whether it's opportunities or dealing with hardships so much of it has to do with being prepared for when they present themselves, right? And and I think we need to be, uh, Jordan Peterson made that quote, right? You want to be the kind of man that at a family's you know funeral, you're the one supporting and loving and, and helping others because you don't need it. Because mm. you've gotten complete with yourself in your mind of how you deal with things. And you're in such a great place that you can deal with those things in a really good way. Yeah, I think that's I think that's powerful. But I also want to address his concern of I mean, I'm assuming that his wife is him and his wife are dealing with this now. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I think I think you're right. So, I think yeah. you're spot great on. Great idea. Great For idea, sure. Kip, but uh yeah, boats out of the harbor, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I hate to say it this way, I I think it's right is just be receptive to service. So that might mean I don't know if you have additional kids, but you know, maybe you take a bigger load of, of helping the kids than, than maybe you normally would. Maybe instead of working a few late hours um, or taking lunch breaks, maybe now's the time to go in an hour later and not take a lunch or just bring a sack lunch with you uh, or come home an hour earlier. Man, what a gesture. She knows you're busy at work. She knows what you've got going on. She knows it's a busy season potentially. And yet here you are coming home an hour earlier, sacrificing your own lunch or sacrificing time with your friends to be with her. You know, maybe it's doing a little bit more around the house. Uh, I don't know what, what she likes or how she feels, but maybe it's taking her on a, on a, you know, a family trip or a little weekend getaway. And I, I know it's probably hard like to consider a vacation in, in the midst of what's going on, but I'm not talking about some big elaborate trip. I'm talking about, you know, taking her to dinner and, and maybe getting a hotel somewhere close and setting up a babysitter and just going and enjoying a time and being with each other. Um, you know, sitting down and talking with her coming home with, you know, her favorite ice cream. I, I don't know. I don't writing her a note on the mirror about how much you love her. I think just doing something maybe out of the ordinary and different would let her know. And here's the thing. I think sometimes we think we need to sit down and talk about all these things and, and we should, and there probably will come a time where you will do that if you have not already, but also some things like don't always need to be said. And maybe you can say it differently by leaving a note or by coming home early or by buying her, you know, flowers and letting your, her know you're thinking about her. 
um, or, or this little mini staycation I was talking about, like there's some things here that you can do if you really try to tune into what she's all about. Yeah. Well, and I interrupted you, Ryan, but you were saying it goes back to that other question, you know, working out, right? That's going to help. It really will. It seems mm -hmm. maybe that's not the case, but it totally will. The second thing that you mentioned is journaling your thoughts and feelings to get those out and then having your band of brothers and those around you that you can talk with mm -hmm. and strategize with and, you know, express your concerns and get ideas from them and et cetera. So uh, I didn't, I didn't want to take away. I interrupted you in, no, in that you statement. Did. So yeah. Okay. Cool. What's next? Good luck. All right. man. I, I, I imagine that's a yeah. very difficult Stuff. situation. I'm sorry to hear that you're going through that. Calvin, uh, Luang, how has your journey been since the separation from your wife and sharing time with your children? And how do you navigate the emotional waves of the separation while you lead the Iron Council? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question because that's been a hard one, you know, and, and there's ebbs and flows with all of my children and highs and lows and things that are going well and things that aren't going well. And, you know, it's a challenge that I didn't figure I'd find myself in ever. And yet here I am. So you know, I think it goes back to what I was saying. I, we keep going back to that default question. I keep going back to that answer because it's true. Keep working out, keep journaling. That journaling, by the way, is something I've just recently implemented. It hasn't been real long, maybe three, four months. <clears throat> um, you know, having guys in your corner who you're actually having real conversations with. I went to lunch with a friend the other day and we had a, a good conversation because we talked about things that we were struggling with. And normally maybe a year ago or so, I would have not talked about any of that. And I would have just talked about all the things that were going right, but you need to talk about the things that aren't always going right. That's, that's been really helpful for me, but yeah, focusing on them, trying to communicate with them to varying degrees based on what they're comfortable with. You know, not, not all of my children are totally comfortable with talking about everything like, like I am. So trying to be aware of that, but also push a little bit so that we can have these conversations. Um, so yeah, a lot of things have been good and, and my own personal development journey has been good. I'm, I'm happier than I've ever been. Not ever, but I'm, I'm happier than I've been in a long time, I think. Uh, and, and also I've, I've shared this a lot, you know, when people are dealing with hardship, they ask these questions of like, how, how do you deal with it? How do you overcome it? Well, you make yourself the project. That's what you do. And don't we, as men love projects, whether it's yep. building something at the house, building a it's bookshelf. Inspiring putting together an Ikea bookshelf at the house, which is like one of the most challenging things, but you know, you feel good when you get the dang thing done. And <laughs> um, we like projects. And so be the project, you know, it's a perfect time. We're just starting the third quarter of this year, 2023. And there's no greater time than to decide, you know what? Yeah. It's time for me to get my fitness locked in. Uh, it's time for me to learn how to communicate more effectively. It's time for me to, release some of the trauma or even limiting beliefs, like a limiting belief I had one as it relates to relationships is, Oh, you're not supposed to share that stuff with women. You're not supposed to talk about how you feel or, you know, burden her with any of the, 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 the things that you might be dealing with mentally or emotionally. And I, I bought into that. And I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think, I think our, our, our women want partners. And I, and I think they want to hear some, I don't think they want to hear you whine and complain and bitch and moan all the time without solutions or see you working towards solutions. Like if you said, Oh, I'm so fat. I, I hate that I'm fat and I don't, sh I shouldn't be this way. Yeah. And then you never do anything about it. I think that's going to diminish some credibility and trust in her eyes. But if you're like, Oh, hon, I'm just having a hard time. Cause I look at myself in the mirror and I don't like who I see and who I become. I used to be so fit and strong and athletic. And now I just feel like a fat slob. So I'm on the path. And then you, you actually like you say it, but then you actually start doing that work. And she's like, Oh, not only does she see that you're a man of your word, she actually becomes more physically attracted to you. Obviously that's a good outcome as well. So yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to analyze my limiting beliefs and, and just navigate life in a different way than I have. Like, where was I good? And where was I weak? And let's shore up the deficiencies and weaknesses. Yeah. He used uh, the term emotional waves. <clears throat> if you don't mind me asking, you know, midday today, you you get hit with the emotional wave of um, your family, you know, and usually they're dramatic, right? The story I used to say is like, my family's falling apart, mm -hmm. right? 
So you get hit with the wave at 2 p.m. today. How do you deal with it in that moment? How do you navigate that moment of just like, just pissed or angry, sad, all of that emotion of of dealing with reality? Sometimes I I distract myself with work or something else, and that's effective. Yeah, it is. It's just a band aid. But it is, a, but it is yeah. effective. It's not know, addressing anything per no, se, but it's how you get past the wave. Yeah. Because that's you paddle over it. Well, it's appropriate sometimes. Like if you have work to do, you've got to do the work. You know, you've yeah. talked about it. You used to run a lot, right? You said that is like, yeah. man, I started running yeah. a lot. Right. That's how you dealt with it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but one thing that's helped me is, is well, two things. Number one, lengthen out the time, the lens in which you're looking at life. Cause in, in these moments, when you look at it, like your relationship with your kids are, they're strained, like really strained and it's hard. Like it's really hard to deal with. Cause you don't like, you don't want that. You don't want them. Like I've had thoughts of like, are my kids going to hate me? Like, are they never going to want to have a relationship with me again? You know, what are they gonna, like, they're going to hold this over us and it's going to ruin the relationship. I'm sure you felt that way too. Totally. And so I look at it, that, that's a micro moment of, uh, and it's probably not accurate either because you're not seeing the entire yeah. picture. You're just seeing in the moment. You're projecting. Like maybe, yeah. Right. Maybe one of your kids says something or you have an experience. You're like, oh, this sucks. And that's all you can see in this. I'm making this like, you know, this, this window. But if you spread out that time horizon and you look at everything else, it's like, oh, okay, well, we can rebuild this. You know, we can change this and we can have these conversations and we can talk about this. And you lengthen it out and that's a little blip. I'm not saying it's insignificant. I'm just saying it's a blip in the grand scheme of things. Um, so that, that's been one way to, to work through it. Another way is to look at the relationship. That's where most of my stress comes from. And uh, the emotion is like the strain on our, my relationship with my children. <clears throat> and in those moments, I think about how can I connect? And then I give myself something to do. And it might be a simple text like, hey, guys, thinking about you today. Hope all's going well. Or what are you or asking a question? Or, hey, can I come by and, you know, grab you and go get a drink or something? You know, so there's like, there's these little things that touch points that you can do when you feel like that. Um, I think we do have to be careful of not using our kids to satisfy our own emotional needs. You got, I think we need to be careful. Because I, look, I, I, would, I have been yeah. guilty of that. And it's most like, parents it, will try to. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes a crutch and it's not good for kids either. Um, no, it's too much pressure. But also, but also they need you. And so there might be moments where you can engage in them in a different or new or unique way or in a way they're interested in, in order to, to connect. So I don't know. I don't have a good answer on that. I'm, I'm navigating these waters myself. So. No, I, I think that was a good answer actually. I mean, I think it's spot on actually. Um, Aaron Knatzer. Hey, Ryan, I work in a construction industry at a pace of 911 all the time. We work on an average 12 hours a day or a little more in a roughly physical, a physically physical environment. I'm experiencing burnout after only a few months in the, in the company. Worse. My question is this, how have you dealt with burnout and continue to push through to realize your vision and complete objectives? So if I told you, Hey, Kip, like, let's say you, you hired me to, to, um, you wanted me to train you. And I said, Kip, I need you to start running. Well, like, what would you say? If that's what I said, Hey, Kip, you want me to train you? I need you to start running right now. Go ahead and start running. What would you Just say? Right now? Right What's now? What's the strategy? What's the plan? Yeah. <laughs> you would ask, you might say, okay, for like how long, like what distance? Yep. Like yep, you would ask totally. more questions about it. Why would you ask more questions? Because it's infinitely harder to do something forever or for an unspecified amount of time. Yeah, yep, totally. And I think that might be what you're running up against right now. And my question to you is, how long do you need to do this for? Like, let's forget about the breakneck speed that you're going at. Like, for how long? Because I can do that for a sustained period of time. You, you can. You're doing it for months. Like, you can do it yeah. for a sustained period of time. What's the strategy here? Is it yeah. just busy season? Because if it's a busy season, got it. I'm going to be busy for three months. I think I can handle that. And then you see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. But 
I think there's some things that you need to ask maybe some other people in the organization of like, Hey man, I feel like we're just like running and gunning all the time. Is this our normal pace? Like, don't say it as, as like you're, you're skeptical or, you know, you're, you like griping or moaning. Like you don't want to do that. Cause that's going to work its way up the chain of command. You might get yourself in trouble, but I think it'd be appropriate to say, Hey, we're, we're working harder than I anticipate. I didn't expect it to be like, is it always this pace? I would want to know totally. that. <laughs> like you might want to clarify, like, uh, you know, so is this, uh, is this normal guys or, uh, yeah. Is this, yeah. Because totally. if it is, I don't know how long that's sustainable for. I don't even know if you want to do that. Like I wouldn't want to do that. I could do it for a few months. I could do it for a year. When I started order a man, I did, I did both my financial planning practice and this for at least a year. I lost you on audio. Oh, you got Kip has a visitor. He mute Kip muted me. I think. Did you? Are you muted or what? I, I muted you Don't to mute. say, "Hey, I'm recording." And then oh, this guy got came it. in anyway. I thought you were talking yeah. to me. What's okay. up, buddy? You're gonna be shy now. <laughs> he want to be on camera as soon right. as we call him out. Yeah. He's like, I know. Get shy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's important to know what the plan is, what the strategy is, so you could ask a coworker. You might even ask an employer. Again, you're not going to do it from a, a position of griping. You're just for some clarification. Hey, how long do these projects take? What, what's the pace like? So you know. And if you know, Kip's out of here for a second. If you know what they are, then I think you're going to have the greater ability to be able to drive on, the greater ability to keep keep going on because you know that there's some end or some destination in mind. Now, that being said, how do you manage that? I think you manage it by taking care of yourself. Again, we're talking about personal sovereignty. So what are you doing for yourself? Here's one that's counterintuitive that we keep telling you, you need to exercise. Now that's counterintuitive. You're like, oh, Ryan, I'm already working Dude, I'm burning out days. 12 hour days. I'm yeah. doing this. I'm not telling you need to train for a bodybuilding competition, but you should wake up an hour earlier or whatever you need. And maybe you just get some stretching in. Totally. Maybe, maybe instead of just hurrying and getting out of the house and just like eating, you know, stopping by the convenience store and getting a bunch of junk on the way out, you actually wake up a little earlier and you feel your body correctly by making yourself some breakfast. Uh, maybe at night you don't stay up so late or you don't have the drinks that you're used to having uh, and you go to bed a little bit earlier. Maybe your lunch break is not always spent with the guys doing whatever it is they do, but maybe your lunch break is, Hey, I'm going to go into the car and I'm going to blast the AC. I'm going to eat a good, healthy lunch that me or my wife packed for me. And I'm going to uh, listen to my favorite book or just listen to some music and just rejuvenate, recharge. Like what can you do for yourself in those moments that are going to, that's going to re-energize you and get you back into the game when you need to be back into the game. Totally. And we're, and, and, and I think some guys might be listening to this and like, well, geez, Ryan, I feel burnout, but I'm not working 12 hour days and I'm not doing physical uh, construction job. I'm, I'm sitting at a desk and I feel burnt out. And, and to that, and maybe I'll pose that question back to you, but one thought there is most employees that feel burnt out and have like anxiety or stress, it's not typical workload. <laughs> In a lot of cases is they don't, back to your original point, they don't know what the point of what they're doing is. They don't see the long-term strategy. They're not bought into like the long game, or they think the work that they're doing is being wasted because it's just, it's mundane, stupid things that they shouldn't have to be doing because of some company process or something else. And so be, I, I, I just want to point that out, that this could be a burnout that's not physical either. And some of it is not knowing the long-term strategy and game. Yeah, that's, that's true. So the better, the clearer you can get about that and the sooner, I think the better you're going to be. And by the way, like if anybody's thinking that like, well, I'm not doing what he's doing and I feel burnt out and I feel bad that I'm burnt out where I'm not working as hard as you don't need to get in the comparison game either. So be yeah. careful. If of you feel that, like, that way. Yeah. Yeah. If you feel like if that's what's going on, you address it. It doesn't matter if you think yeah. I, I made some posts, these were years ago, and I was saying, you know, how challenging it could be to as, as a business owner. 
And what I'm dealing with as a business owner, I know is not as significant or challenging, physically intensive or mentally hard as, as other people, but that doesn't negate my experience. And so I had a, one person in particular was like, well, you know, Ryan, you're saying this is hard, but you should see what I do. It's like, this is not a contest, man. I know yeah. like, like for example, law enforcement official officer <clears throat> or, 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 or a member of our military, just because I have a heart, I'm not saying they don't, I'm not saying that my heart is the same as your heart. I'm not even saying that yours isn't hard. I'm just saying this is a challenge I'm going through right now. And it's, it's separate. <laughs> it's separate. Kip has another visitor, same visitor another time, but it's separate from what somebody else may be experiencing. So we don't need to compare ourselves to those other hardships. It's bumping up against time as it is, Kip. And I know you have a hard stop and the family is now motivated and excited to get going for the day. So let's wrap this up, brother. All right. Sounds good. Sorry, man. So if we hear we your little guy earlier, in the bathroom next to you. I know. We'll, we'll I know. see if we can edit out. <laughs> yeah. He's like grabbing water. So got we mentioned one this earlier, the importance of a band now. of brothers, right? <laughs> and so to join that band of brothers or to learn more about it, go to orderofman.com slash iron council. And as always connect with Mr. Mickler on Instagram <laughs> and Facebook and Twitter <laughs> at Ryan Mickler. How's that, man? All right. I was all right. Was I don't mess. think anybody's going <laughs> to, I don't know what you even said. I'm just laughing at you. He's got, if you don't know, he's got kids coming around and his little guy oh and then my like your daughter coming well, this to is pick first, up the, it's hilarious. First recording in the, in the uh, new apartment. So yeah, we'll work on a system. <laughs> I used to, I used to think that, you know, all of this needed to be perfectly polished and you know, sure. We want to, we want to do service to the world. Do yeah. <laughs> but also just the fact that you're here, I appreciate you being here, Kip. I know you're on your trip with your family, but it means a lot to me that you're here because I know that this work is important to you. And guys, I hope you know that this that work is. is important to Kip too. It's important to me, obviously, but it's important to Kip because he wouldn't be on this call. There's a thousand things that you could be doing with your family right now. And I think this also goes to the work-life balance that we were talking about earlier. Like there's some boundaries and there's some things in place. It's like, Hey, I'm going to do this thing. It's going to take me an hour. And then I'm with you guys. And those are the boundaries that you communicate and, and, and uh, it's okay. You know, we don't expect totally. people to be all in on everything all the time, as long as we're communicating it effectively. So I appreciate you, man. All right, brother. Enjoy <laughs> your trip guys. Thank you. We'll be back on Friday until then go out there, take action, regain, or retain that sovereignty, become the man you are meant to be.